فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد My beloved brothers and sisters Inshallah ta'ala today we're going to start the explanation of this book is called Mukhtasar Ahadith al-Siyam Adabun Ama Ahkamun wa Adabun It's a hadith pertaining to fasting rulings in it and etiquettes and manners okay so what i will do inshallah ta'ala is i will explain extract benefits from the hadith these two brothers inshallah ta'ala one will read the arabic one will read the english and then i'll explain the hadith inshallah ta'ala but before i go in there is something i have to say inshallah ta'ala and that is my beloved brothers and sisters Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he sent the messenger alayhi salatu wa salam, Allah tells us he sent him with two things. He says, subhanah, huwa alladhi arsala rasoolahu bil huda wa deen al haqq. He is the one who sent the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with two things. Huwa alladhi arsala rasoolahu bil huda, guidance, wa deen al haqq and the religion of truth. The scholars, they say that huda, guidance here means beneficial knowledge al-ilm al-nafi' wa deen al-haq means righteous actions al-amal al-salih righteous actions so the prophet alayhi salatu was salam was sent with these two beneficial knowledge and righteous actions every one of us who prays the salah in surah al-fatiha we ask allah tabarak wa ta'ala to guide us on the path of those who he is pleased with we say, إِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Which path? صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ Oh Allah, guide us. Guide us on what? The straight path. The path of those who which you are pleased with. The path of those who you are, you've blessed. Now, who are the ones who Allah blessed? When you're praying for Salah and you're reading Surah Al-Fatiha, you're asking Allah specifically, to guide you on the straight path, on the path of those who which Allah Taala has bestowed upon them what? He has bestowed upon him upon them His mercy. He's bestowed upon him His virtue. Subhanahu wa Taala. Who are they? It's the people who combine between two things. They combine between righteous actions and beneficial knowledge. Because the ayah, the same ayah after that, what does Allah say? غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الضَّالِّينَ مَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ is the Jews as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said وَلَا الضَّالِّينَ is the Christians Where did the Jews go wrong and where did the Christians go wrong? The Jews went wrong by having knowledge but not implementing it and the Christians went wrong by implementing that which they had no knowledge of so they came with actions, no knowledge the Jews came with knowledge but no actions. So the ones who Allah is saying that He has bestowed His blessing upon are those who combine between what? Beneficial knowledge and righteous actions. And Allah also says, لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَعَثَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ يَتْلُوْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَإِن كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ لَفِي ضَلَالٍ مبين. Also in another ayah, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, He says in Surah Al-Jum'ah, هُوَ الَّذِي بَعَثَ فِي الْأُمِّيِّينَ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ يَتْلُوْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ لَفِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came to what? وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ To teach them the Qur'an and to teach them the Sunnah. So what I'm saying to you in simple terms, my beloved brothers and sisters, is what you need to acquire whilst you're in this world is beneficial knowledge. Gain knowledge. Learn. And the second thing is implement that which you know. Implement that which you know. 
the beneficial knowledge you know, implement it. And from the things that are beneficial knowledge is learning or is the front, forefront is the kitab and the sunnah. Learning the Quran and learning the prophetic tradition. And what we're going to be doing here inshallah ta'ala is we're going to be taking a hadith and we're extracting some benefits from it. Rulings. Because Ramadan is around the corner. And the scholars when they categorize the knowledge they categorize it into two. Ilm which is fardu ayn, every single body has to know it. And a knowledge which is fardu kifaya mean idha qama bihi ba'd sakata anil baqeen. If a group of people stand up to do it, the rest don't have to do it. Salatul janaza for instance. Not every single body has to pray it. As long as there's a group of people praying the janaza prayer, the rest can go and they don't have to pray it. But there are knowledges which are obligatory on every single person and they have to know it for themselves. And from the knowledge that's fardu ayn, that everyone has to know, is what is known as mabani ul arba'ah, the four pillars of Islam. After the shahadatain. After ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad rasulullah is knowing salah and how to pray it. Siyam, zakat and hajj. Because these are things that are obligatory on you. And since it's obligatory on you, and you have to come with it, what you will also need to do is to come with the understanding of that which is obligatory. Because the qaida al-muqarrarah and al-ulama, the principle that the scholars agree unanimously upon is what? مَا لَا يَتِمُّ الْوَاجِبُ إِلَّا بِهِ فَهُوَ وَاجِبٌ Anything which is... That which is obligatory cannot be fulfilled without it, it becomes obligatory. If you don't know how to pray, you won't be able to pray. And so if you don't pray, you're in a severe, serious, dangerous situation, right? So the knowledge now becomes obligatory. The knowledge now becomes oblig obligatory. And that's why we've chosen to not take the science, or sorry, this ahkam and the rulings, of fasting from no other place except the state, the, the tongue of the messenger alayhi salatu wasalam and that which he said. The book that we have with us is written by a shaykh Abdullah ibn Salih al-Fawzan who is still fi qayd al-hayat, he's still alive. Hayyun yurzaq. He's still alive and Allah is providing for him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he lives and he resides in a place called Qasim, specifically Buraida. He has many books many books and he's a man which you could say he's mutafannin he has knowledge of so many different fields different fields he has an explanation of on al fiyat ibn malik which he called it dalil salik fi sharh al fiyat ibn malik he has a sharh on bulugh al maram which he called it minhat al alam fi sharh bulugh al maram he has a sharh on qatl al nada wa ball al sada he has a sharah on warakat by Abu Ma'ali al-Juwayni rahimahullah. He is a scholar who went into so many different fields. And to be honest, he reminds me of Shaykh ibn Uthaymi rahimahullah ta'ala. His knowledge of the science of hadith is amazing. Especially the person who looks at his work on Bulugh al-Maram and how he explained it. And he's an individual who gives a lot of importance to the hadiths of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. This book that we have with us, it's a book that focuses on, as we said, fasting, two things of it, ahkam rulings and adab manners pertaining to it. The hadiths that are here are 30 hadiths in which the author brought. And the way he brought it was, he, he wanted for it was that 20, uh, 30 hadiths, and how many days are in Ramadan? 29 or 30. He wanted every day for one hadith to be read through the, the month of Ramadan. Every day one hadith, after Salatul Asr, majority, especially where he's from, Saudi Arabia, when they pray Asr, they like to go through Riyadh Salihin, a book like that, that's what they do. It's a tradition and a common practice which in reality it's not from the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. But that being the case, 
He authored it so the students can be taught it every day, one hadith. So when 30 days finishes, you know the rulings. He made the first 20 days for the first 20 days of Ramadan. And the last 10 days, he made ahkam for it pertaining to the last 10 days. The way, inshallah ta'ala, we plan to go through it is to finish it all today and tomorrow. We'll start today, inshallah ta'ala, and we will finish it with Allah al-Kareem, Isha. Today we'll do the first portion. And tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala, we'll do the second portion of this book. بإذن الله الكريم رب الشرح لي صدري رب الشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي سم narrated by ابن عمر narrated by ابن عمر رضي الله عنهما that Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said Islam is based on five. Number one, to testify that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah and Muhammad is Allah's messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Number two, to offer the prayers. Number three, to pay zakat. Number four, to perform hajj. And number five, to observe fasting during the month of Ramadan. عن عبد الله بن عمر رضي الله عنهما أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال بني الإسلام على خمس شهادة أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمد رسول الله وإقام الصلاة وإيتاء الزكاة وحج البيت وصوم رمضان متفق عليه. So the first hadith that we're going to take is في وجوب. So we're going to the first hadith that you just had. It talks about two things. The first one is في وجوب الصيام that fasting is obligatory وشيء من حكمه and some of the wisdoms pertaining to fasting some of the wisdoms why the Sharia legislated fasting this hadith shows that fasting is obligatory in the Quran قوله تعالى the statement of Allah in which Allah Ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha al-ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum al-siyamu kama kutiba ala al-ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. Or those of you who believe fasting has been made obligatory on you as it's been made obligatory on what? The nations that came before you. So that's the ayah, that's the evidence for it. But this hadith is an evidence also for it. Because the Prophet said, Buniya al-Islamu ala khamsin. Islam is built upon five da'a'im, five pillars. And what are the five pillars? The first one is shahadati an la ilaha illallah, that there is none worthy of worship except Allah. Wa anna Muhammad rasulullah and that Muhammad is his messenger and his slave. So we ha- you see how we combine between the two. Messenger and he's his slave. The reason why we say he's a slave is because he's not worshipped. And the reason why we say he's a messenger is because he's not an ordinary slave. So we say he's what? Abdun, he's a slave. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Fala yu'bad, he's not worshipped. Wa rasulun, and he's a messenger. Fala yukadab, he's not disbelieved. So what is it? Bal rada yuta'u, he's obeyed, wa yutaba, and he's followed. Alayhi salatu wa salam. The second is what? Wa iqam is salah, establishing the prayer. The third one is وَإِتَاءِ الزَّكَاتِ Giving zakat. I mean coming with zakat. وَحَجِّ الْبَيْتِ And the pilgrimage to the Kaaba. وَصَوْمِ رَمَضَان And fasting in the month of Ramadan. So this hadith shows us that is, fasting is a pillar that this religion stands on. And if a building loses one of its pillars, the building would either collapse fully or it will what? It will fully collapse or it will partially collapse. So fasting is obligatory from that angle. But even that though it is obligatory, there's still wisdoms can take pertaining to it. There's hikam. In other words, Allah's actions have wisdom. 
Allah does not just make things obligatory without no wisdom behind it. Sometimes the wisdom is known to us. It's a illa mansusa. The reasoning and the wisdom behind it, we know it. And sometimes the wisdom, we may not know it. And we may not know what the wisdom is. We're going to now take some of the wisdoms that are in it. The first wisdom that is in it, and also you can say the benefits that are in it as well is, it's a ibadah that you get closer to Allah wa ta'ala through. Because you're leaving off what you desire. And why are you doing that? Ta'atan li rabbihi in obedience to his Lord. That's why the slave is doing that. And you're doing it limtithali amrihi. You're following his command. In other words, you're coming with what the true essence of a slave is. You are adhering and you're submitting and you're giving yourself into your master, your Lord, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. By leaving off what you want. By following that which he commanded you and staying away from that which he prohibited you from subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you're coming with what can make your ibudiyah, your servitude complete. Number two. It is from the things that can give you a station high. And that is the station of a taqwa piety. To be conscious of Allah wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, Ya ayyuhalladina amanu, those of you who believe, kutiba ay furida, it has been made obligatory unto you, as fasting, kama kutiba as it was made obligatory on who? Ala alladina min qablikum, those who came before you, la'allakum tattaquna, so you can gain through your fasting taqwa. And taqwa, my beloved brothers and sisters, is what? It is jima'u khayrayid dunya wal akhira. It is the conclusion and the summary of the benefits of this world and the hereafter. Do you want to find the, 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 the true essence? The true essence of good in this world and the hereafter? Do you want to know what it is? It is a taqwa. A taqwa. ولذلك Allah, when He says about Jannah, وَتِلْكَ الْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي نُورِثُ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا مَنْ كَانَ تَقِيَّا Allah says in another ayah وَإِن مِّنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا كَانَ عَلَى رَبِّكَ حَتْمًا مَقْضِيَّا ثُمَّ نُنَجِّ الَّذِينَ تَقَوْ وَنَظَرُ الظَّالِمِينَ فِيهَا جِثِيَّا Allah tells us everybody is going to go over the bridge of the hellfire. Everyone is going to go over that bridge. And people are going to drop. They're going to fall. They're not going to make it through. Allah tells, tells us only one group of people are going to make it through. Every single one of you is going to go through that bridge. And that bridge is on top of Jahannam. Allah says, I'm only going to save a group of people. And they have one characteristic in common. And all of them are what? The people we save are who? The people of taqwa. Also Allah tells us that the people are going to inherit Jannah are who? Taqwa. So khayrayid dunya. This world... And the hereafter, the summary and the khulas a person wants to gain is a taqwa. By fasting, you gain that. By fasting, you gain that. So it's from the wisdoms. Number three is you, you prison. Habsun nafsi al shahwat. You start to prison your own nafs from desires. And as it's known, is once you do do that and you prison yourself from your desires which is what food eating intimacy you prevent yourself from it what does it do what did the prophet tell us tell us alayhi salatu wasalam he said inna shaytana yajri min ibn adam majra dam that shaytan flows in the human the blood where it flows which is the veins sahih when you fast you and you don't eat your veins become tighter. And so through Ramadan, shaitan, that's why he is what? He has no place to stay. He is what? As we're going to see later, inshallah ta'ala. So what fasting brings you is, it cuts off your desires. And one, that's one of the biggest enemies that we have. At least, 
Allah says, وَمَا أُبَرِّئُ نَفْسِي إِنَّ النَّفْسَ لَأَمَّارَةٌ بِالسُّوءِ إِلَّا مَا رَحِمَ رَبِّي That the nafs is the one that calls you to, des- to fulfill, to do haram, right? In Ramadan, in this blessed month, the individual has be- gained what? Trapping shaitan by fasting. What did the Prophet say? To the youth, the young boy, or the young girl who is looking to get married, who are full of desires, what did the Prophet say to them? يَا مَعْشَرَ الشَّبَابِ مَنِ اسْتَطَاعَ مِنْكُمُ الْبَأَةَ فَلْيَتَزَوِّلْ وَمَنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ فَعَلَيْهِ بِالصَّوْمِ Fasting is upon him. Why? What does wija mean? It's to castrate. You know, the, uh, the, uh, if you take the animals, and they do that in some countries and in some places, they destroy the nuts, the bulls, huh? of the animals, so the animal can't have any children, and they, destroy it, and they also destroy it. Or sometimes they take the vein out of him. He doesn't have any sexual drive anymore. Fasting will do that to you. It's as though you won't have no sexual drive anymore. So that's why fasting has wisdoms that it has in it. Also, number four, from the fawaid and the hikam, the wisdoms is, and the qalb yasfu, the heart becomes pure and the heart becomes cleaned. And once the heart becomes clean, your mind is now fresh to think and to ponder and to analyze. وَلِذَلِكَ الْإِمَامُ الْقَحْطَانِيُّ نِزْمُونِيَ He says, He says, وَلَا تَخْشَ بَطْنَكَ بِالطَّعَامِ تَسَمُّنًا فَجُسُومُ أَهْلِ الْعِلْمِ غَيْرِ سِمَانِ Don't fill your stomach and your body with too much food. For verily the bodies of the scholars and the people of knowledge is not big. Scholars are generally not fat and they're not meant to be big. Because they're the ones who are preoccupied and busy with studying and learning. Why? Because man akala anyone who eats namatil fikra wa kaffatil jawarih anil ibadah. Anyone who eats and he drinks a lot, the mind is switches off. The limbs stop working. The person becomes tired. He can't ponder, nor can he think. But he some people in Ramadan they gain more weight than they gain weight. In any other month in the year. So here, if you look at many of us, in Ramadan we do shopping, we, we cook food in Ramadan that we don't even cook through the whole of the year. And that's not the real meaning of Ramadan. The shopping that we do for Ramadan, the f- samosas we see in Ramadan, it comes around at Ramadan time. It has that. Even when iftar comes, many people eat so much. So when the tarawih comes, when the tarawih comes he's partially, I mean, he's absent minded. So f- fasting from the wisdom that it has, it makes sure that the heart is pure and it also keeps the mind clear. Also from the fifth, which is the b- b- wisdoms that are in fasting is what? Ma'rifatu ni'matillahi You come to realize Allah's blessings on you and how he's bestowed so much blessing on you. You actually value the water. And you realize if you're a true believer whose heart is awake and not dead-hearted, you start, re- start to realize something which is, I at least have the choice to drink. And I have the choice to sip a water when iftar comes. There are some people who this imprisonment from drinking and eating is not just one, year, one, one month in the year, but it's actually a life cycle, a, a, a cycle of the whole year for them. And they live like this, like our brothers and our sisters who live in Syria, Aleppo, who are suffering, who don't have what we have today. Water, clean water, means a lot to them. Wallahi billahi does. And when you break your iftar, the table has what? So many different flavors. You can have strawberry mirinda, or, you know, orange mirinda, or you, Pepsi is there as well if you want. Coca Cola is there if you want. You have different flavors of choosing. This reminds you of the blessings of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. And it reminds you not to be from those who Allah says, أَلَمْ تَرَ إِلَى الَّذِينَ بَدَّلُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ كُفْرًا وَأَحَلُّوا قَوْمَهُمْ دَارَ الْبَوَارِ جَهَنَّمَ يَسْلَوْنَهَا وَبِئْسَ الْمِهَادِ وَمَا بِئْسَ الْقَرَارِ They changed Allah's blessing which they had. Allah bestowed blessings on them instead of showing gratitude and remembrance of this blessing. They exchanged it with disbelief of it. 
And Allah tells us in many places in the Quran, Allah blessed them. Allah gave them a lot. Instead of showing gratitude and realizing that they have a blessing, what did they do? They showed disbelief. But I want people, many people, when I say blessings, they always think of food. And that's what came, came, comes to my mind first as much as it comes to many of you's mind as well. But one of the great, if not the greatest blessing that you have, is the fact Allah has allowed you from all of the creation He has. He chose you to be a Muslim, to know the true religion, and to be able to fast in this great noble month. Hadi wahda, that alone itself is a blessing. And Allah referred to that as a blessing. What did He say? الْيَوْمَ أَكْمَلْتُ لَكُمْ دِينَكُمْ وَأَتْمَمْتُ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعْمَتِي وَرَضِيتُ لَكُمْ الْإِسْلَامَ دِينًا Al-Yawma today I have completed your religion for you. And today I have completed my blessing unto you. And I have become pleased Islam as a religion for you. That's a blessing. And Imam Ahmed rahimahullah saw a man making dua. And he said, Alhamdulillahi ala ni'matil Islam. Praise is to Allah. Praise is to Allah tabarakwa ta'ala in the blessing of Islam which he has given me. And Imam Ahmed rahimahullah said to him, Wa ala sunnah. And the fact that Allah guided you to the sunnah. Because that is also a blessing which is more specific than the general blessing. Abu Ali, he said, Abu Ali, who is a student of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and Abdullah ibn Abbas, he said, I don't know which blessing is greater to me. Ni'matul Islam and Hadani Allah, that Allah guided me to Islam or that Allah Ta'ala guided me to the sunnah. And Allah showed me the sunnah. Because within Islam are there so many groups that Allah Ta'ala guided you to a group which Allah Ta'ala is pleased with. That itself, he said, is a blessing. So what I mean from these brothers is what? It's a blessing. It's recognition. Absence of something makes you realize what you have. They say, Al-Mu'asaratu Hirman. Having something prevents you from realizing what you have. Laylatul Dhalma Yuftaqadul Badr. The night when it's pitch black dark is when you realize the quality and the value of the moon. You wouldn't know that before. You have a family member. You don't really realize what position they're holding for you right now. But whenever they move away from that, everything that they were holding down, it starts to come to you as a, as a wave of water. It comes to you now. Now you realize they were holding something from you, even if it's very small. Even if it's very small. Ni'mah. Well, the scholars, they say, a shukru, gratitude, is saydun lil mafqood wa qaydun lil mawjood. Saydun lil mafqood wa qaydun lil mawjood. Gratitude is what? It brings you what you don't have. And it allows what's already there for you to stay. Gratitude, that's what it does for you when you come with it. Whatever blessings that were missing from you, it will come. It will bring it home. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He combined those two in one verse. What did He say? لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ if you show me gratitude, I will increase it for you. Increasing means that what you already have is going to stay and extra is going to come. Min dalalatil mafhum. So when you show gratitude, that's what happens for you and that's what you gain. A lot of us don't realize what we have. You're either going to be smart and benefit from it today and say, I've got this, wallahi, I have a blessing. And today I'm going to show gratitude to Allah. Gratitude to Allah. Or it's going to leave your hands and you're going to cry over spilt milk. It's gone. There's nothing you can do about it. So that's one of the wisdoms in fasting. The sixth, which is the last one, is al fawaid as health benefits that it has. It also has health benefits. That a person... Fasts, and through that fasting of theirs, what do they gain? 
When I say health benefits, the health benefit doesn't necessarily mean that if you had diabetes, you get better. What it means also is that from the health benefits that it has, addiction and things that you are addicted to, you have a period of time to disconnect yourself from it. If you're a heavy smoker, and you used to smoke a lot, that period of time in which you are fasting, you're prohibited from it, aren't you? So if you smoke five times a day, مثلاً, and now Ramadan has come, صحيح, it's an opportunity for you to stop that smoking. ولذلك ابن القيم رحمه الله he mentions that addiction to something even psychologists when they speak about it to get rid of an addiction it takes 30 days every year once Allah gives you that opportunity to get rid of any addiction which you have As I was speaking, something came to my mind. I was going to say, if you smoke five times a day, and within this time you are prevented from smoking, you're probably going to smoke once or twice. But I remember some people, they smoke all the five at night. So I didn't finish off my sentence. He knows he can't fast, he can't smoke between what? Fajr and what? Maghrib, right? So what does he do? At night time, he goes, pff, 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 all of it. He does all the five that he used to do. He's, he does jama' of it. So he combines it. Yeah? He combines all of it. So we say to Allah, Tabarak wa ta'ala, Allahumma wafiqna, or Allah guide us, ritiba'i al-huda, in following guidance. Wajannibna asbab al-halaki wa shaka and divert us from the path of deviation and corruption. Warzuqna al-fiqh fi deen. Allah provide for us and give us understanding of your religion. Walwafata ala sunnah. And oh Allah, take our soul upon the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam. Waghfir lana, oh Allah, forgive us. Waliwalidina and our parents. Walijami'il muslimin and all the muslims. Naam.